So now let's look at what happens to an equilibrium constant when we make some kind of change to the given reaction. So we've been talking about reactions being at equilibrium, which means that there is a forward and reverse reaction going on. So I could just as easily write a given reaction in its reverse form, and these two reactions are going to be related to each other. So the first rule is that if I reverse a reaction equation, the K for the new reaction is going to be the inverse of the first K value. So if I give you this reaction, I tell you the K value is 3.6 times 10 to the eighth, I then reverse the reaction. So I say the products are now reactants and um, the reactants are now products. I want to find the new K value for this reverse reaction. It is the inverse of the first K value. So the new K or KC2 for this second reaction is one divided by the K for the first reaction or KC1. In this case, 2.9 times 10 to the minus ninth. So likewise, if we make similar changes, so here I still have my original reaction. I'm going to call this KC1. What happens when I multiply through this reaction by some uh, whole number? In this case, we're going to multiply by 2. So, uh, you know, the 3 becomes a 6, the 1 becomes a 2, the 2 becomes a 4. What's going to become the new K value if I multiply the whole reaction by 2? So the rule is, is we take the original K value, so in, in this case the K for this first reaction is 3.6 times 10 to the eighth. I then raise that to the power of whatever number we multiply the reaction by. So here going from the first reaction to the second reaction we multiplied by the value of 2, so I take the original KC value and then I raise that to the power of 2. So if I multiply by 3, it would be raised to the third power and so forth. So KC2, so this K for the second reaction, is the square of whatever KC1 was. So in this case, the square of this K value, 3.6 times 10 to the eighth, is 1.3 times 10 to the 17th. So likewise, if I take my original reaction and I say divide it by a number, we do take it by a root. So if I take this original reaction and now let's say I divide by three, so here one third into three divided by three is H2 or two thirds NH3. I've divided that original reaction by three. I then take the original K value, K, uh, KC1, and I take the corresponding root. So if I divide it by three, I take the cube root. If I would have divided by two, it would be the square root. So in this case, this new K value where I've divided the original reaction by three is KC1 um, to uh, raised or taken the cube root. So KC3 for this reaction here, this new reaction is uh, 711. So another important idea is that if I can add two reactions together to get a third reaction, the K for that third reaction will be the product of the Ks of the two reactions that I added together. So this is an important idea. This is going to allow us to sometimes come up with a K value for a reaction that we don't know or so we can't actually do inside of a laboratory experiment. If I know the K values for other reactions, I might be able to combine them together to get an unknown K value. So here I have uh, two reactions, uh, KC1, KC2. And then if you look at it, if I add these two reactions together, I get this third reaction. So if I add this, I get uh, sulfur on one side, I have one oxygen plus another half of oxygen, and I get three halves of an oxygen. The SO2s will cancel, so I had one on the right here, one on the left there that's going to cancel, and then I have an SO3 on the right. So when I add reaction one and reaction two together, I get reaction three. And the idea is, I then say, what is the K value for this third reaction? And I've given you the K value for the first two reactions. It's the product of those two K values. So if I take KC1, the equilibrium constant for the first reaction, and equilibrium constant for the second reaction, I multiply those two, I then get the equilibrium constant for this third reaction, or 1.1 uh, times 10 to the 65th. So this is an important idea. So let's take it a little bit further, and this is kind of a common reaction, uh, common question that you're going to get in uh, many exams. And I'm going to give you kind of a simplified version of this, but the idea is I have a reaction, I want to find the K value for it, and what I do is I give you multiple reactions and give you their K values, and I want to take these 
given reactions and combine them in some way such that I can come up with the given or the reaction in question in this case. So generally what will happen is you'll have to make multiple steps. So reversing, multiplying by two, uh, multi adding two reactions together. And so this is going to use all of the ideas that we've talked to up until now. So in this case, we're only looking at two reactions on an exam. They might give you like four or five reactions, but you need to sort of hold steady and look at the basics in order to be able to uh, come up with the steps that you need to do to get to the reaction uh, uh, answer to the uh, answer of the reaction that you're looking for. So one of the things I look at is I look at the species that are on the left and on the right hand side of the reaction that we are looking for uh, the equilibrium constant for. And I say in this case I need to have N2O4 on the left hand side. So inside of the reactions that are given at least one of these reactions needs to have N2O4 on the left hand side. So in this case the first reaction doesn't mention N2O4, the second one does involve it but it's on the right hand side so I'm probably going to want to take the inverse of this second reaction. So I want to make N2O4 on the left hand side because when I'm done adding these things together I'm going to need N2O4 in, on the left hand side of my product reaction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take reaction two and go ahead and reverse it to get reaction three here. And we already know if I reverse a reaction, I take an inverse for it. So I gave you the K value for reaction two. The K value for this new third reaction is going to be the inverse of that, or in this case, KC3.0213. Uh, so now I have N2O4 on the left. The other thing in my reaction of interest here, I need N2 and O2 on the right hand side. Well, in this first reaction, I have N2 and O2 on the right hand side, so that's looking pretty good, but the idea is if I didn't have that, I would have to do some manipulation to have this piece there. So the idea now is if I look at it, if I take reaction one and reaction three and add them together, um, the two NO2s are going to cancel, and I can get to this reaction that we're interested in. So if I take reaction one and reaction three and add them together, so all the species on the left, um, I leave there and all the uh, species on the right. And then remember when we talked about this in first semester general chemistry that, you know, even though this is an equilibrium arrow, it's still like an equal sign in mathematics. If I have the same thing on the left and as I do on the right, I can cancel those two things out. So I have two NO2 here on the left-hand side of the arrow, two NO2 on the right, so I can cancel that out. And then what I'm left with is uh, what I was originally looking for in this first uh, reaction, so the, the reaction of interest. So now I knew to get to this reaction, the one that we're interested in, I had to add uh, the K value f or, or the, rea the first reaction and the third reaction. So because I was able to get to uh, the, the, the answer here by adding the first reaction, the third reaction, the K value is going to be the product of the first K value and the uh, third K value. So the first one was given, that was 54. Remember the third K value we had to find because we reversed reaction 2 to get to reaction 3, so the new K value is 0 0.0213. I then multiply those two together to uh, get to my product here, which is 1.15.